Now we're in James chapter 2, verse 17. Reading from the King James Version, quote, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone, unquote. Remember to look at other versions to see what it says so you can get a better understanding and then parse it out, or even parse it out. Let's look at the English Standard Version, ESV, quote, So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead, unquote. Let's look at the 1599 Geneva Bible, quote, Even so the faith, if it have no works, is dead in itself, unquote. Now looking at the complete Jewish Bible, quote, Thus faith by itself, unaccompanied by action, is dead, unquote. Now, Young's Literal Translation, quote, So also the faith, if it may not have works, is dead by itself, unquote. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to look at the Amplified Bible, quote, So too faith, if it does not have works to back it up, is by itself dead, inoperable, and ineffective, unquote. Now, Corey Tim Boom, survivor of the concentration camps that went around testifying about God many, many times around the world for a long time, she used to love to read the Phillips translation of the Bible. It's a paraphrase. But I'm going to read this whole paragraph here so you can get a context of what we've been studying. We're going to go into the Greek afterwards, but just hear it to help you get your understanding and footing going. She covers... Well, actually, he covers James 2, 14 through 18, the first part of it. And this is what it says. Now, what use is it, my brothers, for a man to say he has faith, if his actions do not correspond with it? Could that sort of faith save anyone's soul? If a fellow man or woman has no clothes to wear and nothing to eat, and one of you say, Good luck to you. I hope you'll keep warm and find enough to eat and yet give them nothing to meet their physical needs. What on earth is the good of that? Yet, that is exactly what a bare faith without a corresponding life is like, useless and dead. If we only have faith, a man could easily challenge us by saying, You say that you have faith, and I have merely good actions. Well, all you can do is show me a faith with corresponding actions, but I can show you by my actions that I have faith as well. Unquote. Now, remember, I said, go ahead and look at other versions. Try to stay towards things that are good translations to read. Now, I rarely ever look at Phillips, but to help you get an understanding of what we're reading, so I'm not one-sided, I read that for you so that you can go ahead and see what we're talking about and see that I'm not being um, hard on this thing because I am a big believer in action. I see way too many people sitting there doing absolutely nothing in the church in the churches today. So here we go. Let's look at the Greek. Okay. So parsing the Greek, even so faith, if it hath, now let's go ahead and parse up if hath, it's in the present tense, active voice, subjunctive mood. So, remember that that's now. You're doing the action, and it says the possibility or the potentiality is the mood. So, not works is, let's look at the is, let's parse that out. It's present, and it's indicative. So, we're talking about now, and it's a matter of fact. Dead, being alone. Now, let's look at this phrase, being alone. It is used only one time in the Greek, in the King James Version, and it's right here. Okay, so let's continue. Let's look at John Gill's commentary on the Bible on this. Okay, quote, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone, unquote. It is like a lifeless carcass, a body without a soul. Verse 26, for as works without faith are dead works, so faith without works is a dead faith, and not like a lively hope and faith of regenerate persons. And indeed, such who have no other faith than this 
are dead in trespasses and sins. Not that works are the life of faith, or that the life of faith lies in and flows from works, but as Dr. Ames, that's A-M-E-S, observes, good works are second acts, necessarily flowing from the life of faith, to which may be added, and by these faith appears to be living, lively, and active, or such who perform them appear to be true and living believers. End of John Gill's commentary on James chapter 2, verse 16. Now this reminds me of a time when I was going to seminary, and my seminary was closing in the middle of my studies because of mishandling of funds and the lack of raising funds. So they were closing all of a sudden, and I was in the process of transferring because of that. And then I was talking to one of the professors, and I said to her, I, I asked her, goes, listen, you all are closing this place. This place is raising up ministers and missionaries. I don't think it's the will of God this place should close, regardless of what has happened. My question to you is this. Have you all prayed about it? And why are you not living by the way you t- preach and teach to us that we need to pray and ask God, and that if it's accordance with His will, that He will answer? So why are you not praying and asking God to take care of this place, to keep it open, to pay and provide all your bills, provide all your mortgages and everything? Why are you not going ahead and praying, asking God, please take care of our bills, we're going to go walk on faith, and we're going to continue teaching here, and believe and pray continuously that you will raise up the money needed to keep this place open. It struck an accord with several of the professors, and they did so. That seminary is still active. I'm almost done with my doctorate degree, which I also convinced them into starting the program for a doctorate of ministry. And I'm finishing up my degree now. So God does answer prayer. But you need to step out on faith. Like today, financial hardships have happened. We're almost out of that, but financial hardships have happened. We had to take care of family members, and that drained us, money-wise, terribly, to the point that it's in despair. It's like, what do we do? What do we do? So I'm like, you know what? The Lord has always provided. I'm going to continue working all my jobs. I'm going to continue working hard. God will take care of it. And this morning, I could have been out there earning the money, but I knew that I had to come back here and do God's work first. And he will bless my way today, and he will provide for me, and I have faith. And that faith means I'm going to step out there in action. I'm not just going to pray and ask. I'm going to actually step out there, and I'm going to do, because I know he's going to do it for me. Is there a chance of disaster? Only if you didn't have God, I would say yes. But since I have God, not a prosperity gospel, but I know I'm following God's written word. I have faith that he will take care of me. So I go out after I get done here. Faith in action shows people that you are God's child. And when you see your brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted, who are sent out and have lost everything, their homes are burned down. They've been jailed. The the breadwinner has been jailed um, because he stands up for his faith. Whatever it is, if you see a brother and sister in need, you are to responsible to help them, provide them your best clothes, your best food. Give them what they need. If you don't have it, pray. Do what George Mueller used to do for the orphans in England in the 1800s. Pray to God to give him everything he needed for those orphans. And then he prayed and asked God to give him even more so he could give to missionaries that he knew that were in need overseas. And he sponsored and supported Hudson Taylor in China and still fed over 10,000 orphans, all by not telling everybody their needs, not a professional beggar, but by prayer and faith. And if you want to have a wonderful love for God, you ought to walk in faith and love with God and go to prayer, bring him your needs, be respectful and wait for him to answer before getting up. 
and then thank him. This is Discovering the Scriptures. I hope you have a blessed day today.